water as yet another teenager loses their life. The red extreme weather warnings are still in place ahead of predicted record-breaking highs in England tomorrow, also tonight. We're in France, where wildfires and evacuations have sparked warnings of a heat apocalypse. As Prince Charles repeats calls for tackling what he calls the climate crisis emergency. And in the Tory leadership race, five will become four tonight. This is the ITV Evening News with Charlene White. Good evening. Large parts of the UK are sweltering tonight in what's set to be the hottest heat wave on record, with warnings that temperatures will rise even further tomorrow. It reached 38.1 Celsius in Suffolk today. That's more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's shy of the new record. Wales, though, reached 37.1 Celsius, its hottest day ever. And Scotland and Northern Ireland peaked above 30 degrees. That was enough to cause chaos and death across the UK. The Melton runway is thought to have shut at Luton Airport and RAF Bryce Norton. Many train services have been suspended, schools closed for the day or shut early, and a 16-year-old boy tragically died at a lake in Berkshire. Tonight we'll have the latest on the extreme heat impact from our reporters across the country and further afield. But first, here's Geraint Vincent. As another summer heads towards an uncomfortable height, take another look at the place we like to call our green and pleasant land. In places, it's not so green and pleasant. Well, maybe if you can get off work and find your way to the water. But the message from the government is clear. This weather is not so much to be enjoyed as to be wary of. It is about uh, common sense following the, the advice, the uh, public health advice from the UK HSA. Uh, in terms of uh, hydration, cover, uh, covering up, uh, being in the shade, uh, avoiding the times of the day when the heat is at its peak. Uh, there's a particular message, particularly for, for, for teenagers, children, some of those who may be tempted to go for a swim. Uh, there's significant dangers of that. Tragedy took another teenage life today. A 16-year-old boy drowned after getting into difficulty in a lake in Berkshire. His death follows similar fatal incidents in Manchester and Northumberland over the weekend. But an extreme heat warning means that temperatures are so high, they represent a risk to everyone's health and care must be taken to avoid their effects. Although some people are most vulnerable, particularly those in older age groups, those with heart and, and lung conditions, these temperatures are um, so uh, unusually high that everybody can be affected. Some schools will close today, others will close tomorrow because of the heat. But it's already taken its toll on parts of the transport infrastructure. Luton Airport suspended all flights for a few hours this afternoon after high temperatures caused a defect on the runway. And trains are running at half the speed because the tracks can't take the heat. But there was at least one corner of cool air at Birmingham New Street. The heat wave has struck and covered much of the United Kingdom in fierce sunshine and red warnings. And throughout the afternoon on stretches of bleached out parkland like this, the temperature climbs and climbs again. This weather is absolutely unprecedented. Uh, we have never seen anything like these temperatures in our models before. Um, so the highest temperature we've ever recorded in the UK is 38.7 in 2019. Um, we are seeing a higher than 90% chance of breaking that temperature, if not today, then tomorrow, and at least a 60% chance of reaching 40 degrees, which is unheard of. Where a cooling sea meets sun-baked land, of course, there is a glorious opportunity to enjoy the weather. The beach at Bournemouth this afternoon was packed but temperatures this high form no part of British seaside tradition, and they're ever more likely to be part of our future. Geraint Vincent, ITV News.
Well, the death of a teenage boy in Lake and Berkshire has prompted calls for people to take extra care in open water. It's the latest in a string of incidents as people try to cool off in the extreme temperatures. Well, Mel Bloor is at Bray Lake in Maidenhead for us tonight. And Mel, what have authorities said about this death? Well, they've described it as an absolute tragedy. The alarm was raised just before midday here at Bray Lake following reports that a teenage boy had gotten into difficulty in the water. A search of the lake was carried out, but the boy's body was sadly found at around 1.30 this afternoon. Now, lots of water sports take place here, including windsurfing and sailing. And I'm told by staff here that the boy was not taking part in any organised or supervised activity and that he'd entered the lake after climbing over a locked gate. Tonight, an investigation is underway by police to determine exactly what happened. But the incident has prompted urgent appeals from the emergency services for people to stay out of dangerous waterways and reservoirs. Of course, with the soaring temperatures, uh, some people will be tempted to cool off in the water, but it can be a lot colder than you think, and there are often hidden dangers lurking beneath. Well, thoughts here in Maidenhead, very much with the boys' family following the tragedy uh, today. Police say they are being supported by specialist officers at this very difficult time. OK, now thanks very much. The extreme heat is especially dangerous for vulnerable people and they and their carers being urged to be extra careful. The red alert covers a large part of England, with people being there, being there, being warned that temperatures could cause serious illness or pose a danger to life. Visual Caria reports on the efforts to keep them safe. Extreme heat is dangerous, but for the vulnerable, like rough sleepers, it can be deadly. Oh, yeah. There you go, my son. Thank you. It is why teams of volunteers were out in Bristol to make sure the homeless had enough to eat and drink. I just I stay out the heat, um, you know, go in shops, have got air conditioning, have a look around shops. Um, also, um, you know, I just stay, I stay out the sun. And while the NHS has also been preparing for the unprecedented temperatures, doctors at this West London hospital say post-COVID pressures are now giving way to ones brought on by the heat wave. We've just had eight ambulances arrive at the moment. All those crews have been offloaded to go back out. It's really hot in the department as well. We're in an old building and we're doing what we can to keep our patients and our staff cool where we can. And everyone's being advised to take precautions because of the sheer intensity of that heat. The NHS is reporting that in the past week, it has seen a 525% increase to its website for heat exhaustion advice. Ask my to get and it is the elderly who are particularly at risk. Staff were doing all they could to protect residents at this care home in Cambridge, keeping curtains closed and keeping them indoors. Well, I wish it would stop. I'll be glad when it does stop. We've, we've only got one more day, haven't we? Of extreme heat. I drink a lot of juice and um, I have a shower. But it isn't just the daytime temperatures that are concerning staff. Residents are also being monitored at night. The risk of um, the effect of the heat is much greater with um, residents who are elderly, who have underlying health conditions. We are increasing the frequency of observations. We are obviously worried about the, the soaring temperatures at the night as well. But not everyone, it seems, has been heeding the advice to take care in the sauna temperatures. It's people who have been needing sunblock um, or some protection that you've seen a lot of burns. Some quite severe, particularly children, elderly people, um, dehydration. And we're not out of the woods yet, as temperatures are expected to peak tomorrow afternoon. Set Karia, ITV News, Cambridge. And there's plenty more about the heat wave and on how to stay safe on our website. That's all at itv.com slash news. Well, the high temperatures appear to have melted part of the runways at both Luton and RAF Bryce Norton airports. Flights have now been suspended by a correspondent. Rupert Eden is at Bryce Norton in Rupert and Bryce Norton in Oxfordshire for us. And Rupert, just how serious is this? I think uh, I 
my sense from the MOD is that this is very much a precautionary measure. Uh, the cost of not doing anything when your runway is melting uh, could be far greater than taking the decision that they took earlier today, which was to cut it. Oh, unfortunately, we've lost the connection there with the repair, but let's now talk to Sangeeta Lal, because yes, air travel has been affected, but so too have the railways. Speed restrictions uh, are in place to reduce the chances of tracks buckling. There have been delays and cancellations as well. Uh, the East Coast main line is closed and many operators are now running a reduced timetable. Um, so St. Gita, it's a tough day to be travelling by rail as well. Yeah, and it's expected to get tougher tomorrow. Network Rail says it's going to suspend all of its services along the East Coast main line tomorrow between midday and eight o'clock in the evening. They say that's because the, the impact that the heat is having to the tracks, they're steel, so in this heat they can expand and flex into a bit of an F-shape and that can cause them to buckle. That's of course in the worst case scenarios. But actually other operators are going one step further. LNER is cancelling all of its services tomorrow, saying check for your travel, there will be refunds and rebooking available. And actually across the country trains are running at a reduced speed and that's because the fact that keeps having to the overhead wires it can cause them to sag so they're trying to minimize the damage to the lines but it's not just trains that could be disrupted tomorrow but the roads too bizarrely britters are on standby normally for a cold icy day which sounds quite um, refreshing at the moment but actually they're on standby because the salt and the sand can absorb the moisture in the tarmac so leeds council is on standby to do just that because the tarmac can get sticky in this heat and the heat is expected to rise tomorrow so the advice is check before you travel and only travel if it's necessary okay so Gita, thanks very much for that and i believe we can now re return to rupert even who's at rise norton uh, what more can you tell us about the problems there rupert well i think it was as i was saying earlier just a precautionary measure hopefully for the raf here at rise norton uh, the, the cost of a damaged runway could be really, really high. So it's easier in some senses to say, right, we're going to shut it, and it's melting, uh, we'll ground the planes that are here, but the aircraft that are planning to come in, uh, the MOD, are able to move those uh, to other locations. For those of you who don't know, Rise Norton is very much the place that does a lot of heavy lifting uh, for the MOD. Uh, a lot of troop movements come in and out of here and it's an exceptionally busy airfield uh, from one day to the next. Now the MOD haven't said uh, how long they will keep it for but I think uh, it's probably safe to say given as we know that uh, we're going to see an increased temperature tomorrow that I suspect it's likely that this airfield will stay closed again tomorrow uh, and any plans that the MOD has for aircraft arrivals of the park is will simply be moved uh, to other locations People, businesses and organisations across the country did their best to cope with the conditions today. From staggered deliveries to schools closing early, many did heed the weather warnings. Thought was also given to how our pets would cope as well, as our social affairs correspondent so good with it. Trying to keep cool at Parkins Primary in Leeds. Uniform rules have been relaxed and playing outside in the midday sun isn't allowed. How are you keeping food? Lessons are carrying on, but school was much quieter. It's in one of the six there, the other eight school and not in not in school today. And that's their parents with them. Yeah, so we'll be on a telephone check-in, make sure everything's okay. The head teacher is constantly monitoring classroom temperatures. The decision to stay open is under review. Decisions over to open up closed have got to be taken on the ground level. They can't be taken from an office in, in London where one side doesn't control. Each, each school is different. So if a school leader says we've got to close, they're not doing it because what the next day after doing it for the health, safety of all their pupils. Small businesses are also changing how they operate. I got up at five o'clock this morning just to try and get some cooking done in the cooler hours of the day. This frozen food firm in Harrogate is staggering deliveries. I have paused sending out orders via overnight courier because it's just too hot and it's really important because it's for children that it, the food stays frozen um, and it's just too risky so I won't do that until the end of the week and into next week. 
It's not just humans struggling with the heat. At this animal sanctuary in Bristol, pets were enjoying a paddle. And there was this serious message from vets too. If you do see signs of them getting overheated, so excessive panting, drooling, lethargy, confusion, then take them somewhere cool, offer them water little and often. Back in Yorkshire, hundreds of people descended on Ilkley's open-air swimming pool and welcomed relief from the scorching sun. We've uh, ordered ten times the amount of water than we usually do. Um, we've brought in uh, multiple different first aiders, first aiding companies as well, external, um, not just ourselves as a council. We have at least four times the amount of staff than we, what, we, what we usually do. We've done the same with Esme, what we would do, you know, abroad, keep her covered up and keep her hat on and keep the fluids going. Keeping cool because <laughs> pregnancy is not going too good with the heat at the moment, so yeah, it's good to come out and help this area. While some are clearly enjoying cooling off, these are conditions that Britain just isn't geared up to cope with and it's set to get even hotter. Sarah Corker, ITV News in Ilkley. Okay, let's join ITV weather presenter Becky Mantin, who's at Cambridge University Botanical Garden for us tonight. Becky, just three years ago, the record temperature was set there at 38.7 degrees Celsius, and it's looking like it'll be well broken tomorrow. What do you make of the extreme weather that we're seeing this week? Well, Charlene, you're absolutely right. Look, the weather station here behind me. I've been doing this job for over 22 years, and in that time alone, really a very short amount of time, into the bigger picture, I've seen two new temperature records set. And if we do hit the predicted 41 degrees somewhere across the UK through tomorrow, that will be a rise in the UK's maximum temperature of four degrees in just really a very short amount of time. It's also worth noting, of course, that today has been very still and very sunny. Tomorrow is expected to be cloudier and a lot windier as well. If it was a clear and still day, we would be discussing, we're not, but we would be discussing if those were the conditions, temperatures of around 44 degrees, which would put us on a par with the maximum temperature of Spain that was set very recently. Now, of course, from a point of view of a weather presenter, these stories are very exciting, but frankly, it's now quite alarming. And I do think it has to add urgency to those climate change talks because I can only foresee more of these stories to come. Okay, Becky, thanks very much. Well, she will be back with uh, the full forecast later on in the programme. And there's plenty more to come then on the hottest day of the year. Wales has recorded its highest temperature two degrees hotter than ever before. The devastating consequences of intense heat in parts of Europe were live in France, where thousands are being told to leave their homes. And the field now is to be in the race to be Prime Minister one hour to go until another candidate is out for forecast. And a reminder now of our top story. Britain is baking in what's set to be the hottest heat wave on record. Temperatures reached 38.1 Celsius in Suffolk today, just shy of a new UK record. Wales, though, reached 37.1 Celsius, its hottest day ever. New records are being predicted for tomorrow. The temperature is likely to top 40 degrees. But it's already causing chaos with runways melting, train lines shut and schools closed. There's been tragedy too, where there's 16-year-old boy dying at a lake in Berkshire. A red alert warning remains in place for large parts of England until tomorrow night. But it's not just the UK's hottest week, of course. The extreme heat has come from continental Europe, which has seen record highs and huge wildfires. Thousands of people have been evacuated because of fires in France, Spain, Portugal, Greece and Croatia. One of the worst affected areas in southwest France, where tourists have also been forced to flee. Our correspondent Ben Chapman sends this update from near Bordeaux. For a seventh blistering day, the fires in southwest France continue to rage forcing the evacuation of thousands of people living and visiting this popular tourist region. And just when firefighters think they've got part of it under control, it flares up again. 
In all, 1,700 of them have been tackling two huge wildfires here. The skies above the Gironde becoming a combat zone as all day aeroplanes drop their payloads of water on burning forest. This afternoon, in the resort of La Teste de Bouc, police ordered the evacuation of another 8,000 people, queuing to leave as strong winds carried smoke towards their homes. Some forced to choose the most precious possessions to save before leaving in haste. Are you, are you worried? Are you frightened? Oh, I'm sad. I'm really sad. It's, never mind. When I was leaving, I can hear explosion uh, far from the south. Uh, I think it's a camping that's uh, half burning. You got somewhere else to stay? Yeah, we are cooking something. <laughs> it's not quite the holiday you... Yeah, we have no choice, but uh, it's too dangerous. Above the town, the ominous sight and smell of thick black smoke from the burning forest fills the air. Firefighters now trusted with the homes of those who'd already left. These firefighters are the last line of defence. They've spent much of the day getting hoses ready in case this fire should start moving this way towards these inhabited areas. It's a nightmare being repeated in neighbouring countries. In Spain, huge areas of forest were incinerated in a matter of hours. The enemy, not just the temperature, but winds gusting up to 60 miles an hour. A firefighter and a shepherd who'd ignored an evacuation order lost their lives. What's he doing? The passengers on this train were more fortunate, completing their journey safely, despite the flames on either side of the tracks. Tonight, in the Gironde, Firefighters are being praised for their exceptional work, keeping the ferocious effects of climate change from people's very doorsteps. Ben, we really can't underestimate just how dramatic those pictures were in your report. How unusual are these fires in that part of France? Well, standing here, even some distance from the flames, you can still smell the smoke in the air. It's not unprecedented for there to be fires in this part of France. What is unprecedented is for there to be a heat wave this intense, this early in the season and this widespread across Europe. One senior French firefighter said today that the fires season, which is normally you know, peak and late summer, uh, now lasts effectively 12 months of the year. They need, they need to be ready for it uh, all the time. It looks like today has been a record-breaking day for temperatures in France, a provisional high of 42.6 degrees Celsius recorded just a few miles down the coast from here. Temperatures are expected to drop off quite dramatically tomorrow, down to the high 20s, which will come as an enormous relief to the firefighters and to the residents here. But across Europe, the ground remains just so dry that wildfires are going to remain a threat throughout the rest of the summer. Ben, thank you. Well, back here, it's not just the extreme temperatures that are unprecedented, it's also the large swathes of the country that it's affecting. And no nation has remained untouched by the hot weather. Well, our Wales reporter, Rhys Williams, is in Paris tonight. Paul Riley is in Belfast. And uh, Louise Hosey is in Aberdeen for us. And let's go to you first, Rhys, uh, because Wales has set a new record, hasn't it? It has, Charlene. Here at the Royal Welsh Show in San Elwedd in mid Wales, it's been oppressively hot throughout the day, 35 degrees, but elsewhere it's been hotter. The record has actually broken twice today. Firstly, around uh, lunchtime in Gogeda, then near Aberystwyth, the temperature reached 35.3 degrees. Now, that broke the previous record set in Harden Bridge back in 1990. A couple of hours later, though, the temperature reached 37.1 degrees in Harden Bridge, and that was nearly two whole degrees Celsius hotter than the previous Welsh record. Back here at the uh, Royal Welsh Show, the organisers have been very keen that the around 50,000 visitors who come here every day of the week are ready for the extreme heat and that the animals being put to their paces behind me here are protected as well. And we saw a little bit about that earlier in the programme. It's not actually quite as hot in Wales as it has been in England today, but there is an amber weather warning in place that stays in place tomorrow, although the good news is, is that it's forecast to be very slightly cooler tomorrow before the temperature drops off significantly on Wednesday. 
Still a very balmy 25 degrees here in Belfast city centre this evening. I have to say I'm enjoying that breeze coming up the river like like an from Belfast Lock, well, we haven't seen those exceptional temperatures experienced in other parts of the UK. No new records broken here in Northern Ireland, but it has been the hottest day of the year. Derry Lynn in County Fermanagh recording 31.1 degrees Celsius. Of course, that record doesn't uh, break uh, that experienced in uh, Castle Derg in County Tyrone last July at 31.3 degrees Celsius. In the Republic of Ireland at Phoenix Park in Dublin, they reported 33 degrees Celsius. Uh, of course, we haven't been experiencing this prolonged weather across uh, experience across the UK, but it hasn't stopped uh, warnings from the Public Health Agency. Yes, well, here in Scotland, it also hasn't been seen temperatures in quite the same range as those experienced in England, but it's really been a very hot day in many parts of the country. Uh, tonight here in Aberdeen, the breeze has picked up a little bit, uh, but it's still around 25 degrees and people are still out enjoying the sun. Uh, the hottest place in Scotland so far was Lucas and Fife today. It recorded 31.3 degrees beating its previous record. Uh, both Edinburgh and Aboyne in Aberdeenshire also recorded high temperatures of 30.8 degrees. Uh, there's been some travel disruption with Network Rail putting in place a series of speed restrictions and tomorrow it's expected to be even hotter uh, with predictions that Scotland's all-time record of 32.9 degrees could be broken. Okay, thanks very much for that Louise. And to you Paul and Louise. Prince Charles has repeated calls for tackling what he called the climate crisis emergency. During a visit to Cornwall, he said the government's pledge to reach net zero emissions had never been more important. Our reporter Lizzie Robinson has joined us in the studio. And Lizzie, he's been a powerful voice on climate change for a while now, hasn't he? Charlene, the Prince of Wales has been campaigning on the issue of climate change for decades. He first made his a speech about the issue back in 1970, since saying he was considered rather dotty at the time for talking about it, but he has continued to bang the drum ever since, and today he used a speech in Cornwall to raise the issue once again, using today's sweltering temperatures that we've all been experiencing as an example as to why it's such an emergency, and he feels it needs to be tackled so urgently. This is what he had to say. These commitments around net zero have never been more vitally important as we all swelter under today's alarming <coughs> record temperatures across Britain and Europe. And as I've tried to indicate for quite some time, the climate crisis really is a genuine emergency and tackling it is utterly essential for Cornwall, the country and the rest of the world. And he's not the only member of the royal family to be talking about the issue of climate change today. His son, Prince Harry, used an address to the UN General Set. General Assembly to mark Nelson Mandela International Day, saying, among other things, that climate change is wreaking havoc on our planet and calling for leaders across the world to do more. Okay, Lizzie, thanks very much. The extreme heat we're enduring isn't a one-off. It's because of climate change, just that Lizzie was talking about regarding Prince Charles. And if the causes aren't tackled this week, will just be a taste of things to come. And as Chloe Keeley explains, we'll all have to learn to adapt. At this time of year, it would normally be a lot greener than this. It's golden, it's dry, and really the plants just say, I've had enough now, uh, I'm giving up, I can't grow anymore. On this farm in Lincolnshire, harvest time has come early. This is, this is unusual. Normally at this stage, that will be very moisty and milky, and you'll be able to squeeze that, whereas if you bite that, it's hard. This year, Andrew says his crops have only had half as much rain as last year's got. His sugar beet isn't growing as fast as it should, and he anticipates his yield will be down by 20%. Normally, you need six of these roots to make one bag of silver spoon sugar. But this sort of root, you'd need 12 or 14 because of the size of them. But this year isn't a one-off. It's part of an increasingly disturbing trend. Of the 10 hottest days on record in the UK, all but one have been since 1990. That year, two days in August, brought extreme highs, but the other seven were after the turn of the millennium, including in 2003, when temperatures in Faversham in Kent reached 38.5 degrees Celsius. That record was beaten when they reached 38.7 in Cambridge in 2019.
But according to the architect of the 2015 Paris climate deal, none of this should come as a surprise. We have been hearing from climate scientists for years that this is going to happen. And furthermore, we should be expecting even worse weather events. This is just a foretaste of what is coming at us. Back in Lincolnshire, they are doing their best to prepare. The job of these big blue pipes is to carry water from the north of the region, where there's a surplus, to the south, where there isn't enough. This is the biggest project of its kind in the UK. And in fact, when this network is finished, it'll be longer than the N6. And experts say we should all be thinking of ways to adapt. So adaptation is not optional. Adaptation is crucially important. We have to deal with climate change doing both mitigation, so stop burning fossil fuels, but also adaptation, adapt uh, how, how we live, adapt how we design our cities. Because scientists say what's happening to the crops on farms like this is not just a problem for farmers, but a warning to us all. Chloe Keeley, ITV News, Lincolnshire. It's not just humans who are affected by the extreme heat, it's proving a lot for animals as well. Well, Victoria Grimes is at Chester Zoo for us. The staff have been helping some of their star attractions stay cool. So how are they getting on, Victoria? Oh, they've been working really hard on that today, Charlene. In fact, the zoo itself has been closed. It's the first time in its 91-year history that it's had to close due to the soaring temperatures. But obviously, it has to be the top priority to keep the animals safe and cool. Now, just behind me here, you'll see the flamingos. They're native to the Caribbean, so they're quite good at keeping themselves chilled in this heat. But some of the other residents, some of the best loved residents here, are quite so good at it. So the elephants, for example, have been enjoying uh, several hosing downs today by their keepers to keep them cool in the heat. And a little earlier, they told us why that's so important. We have Asian elephants here at the zoo. So native, um, they would live in more humid, uh, kind of forested conditions. Um, so they wouldn't be necessarily in such a dry heat um, in direct sunlight. Um, so that's why we do need to, to make sure that we help them out as much as possible um, when it comes to, to these sort of soaring temperatures. I'm sure there's a few of us will probably quite enjoy being housed down today by those water cannons. But usually this time of year, they have about 6,000 visitors to the zoo. It will be closed again tomorrow because the priority has to be keeping the animals as cool and comfortable as possible. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Victoria. Everyone finding ways to keep cool. So do stay with us for all the details about the weather tomorrow. And I'm at the weather station here in Cambridge with your full forecast for sun. Tomorrow is going to be even hotter. Also, the Hollywood loves...